All right, I wanted to talk about uh, high horsepower 7.3s and the implications of that high horsepower into the 4R100. Um, so before we get to the 4R100, let's talk a little bit about mechanical vibrations. If you're looking at this drawing, this diagram on the left is a that's a typical uh, single cylinder engine, piston, connecting rod, and crank system. On the right is is what they call a, a free body diagram showing the the forces uh, on each of the members. So basically, looking at this diagram, when just after a combustion event, the piston is forced downward. Well, Newton's law is for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That's just a couple of words that describes Newton's law. Um, when you get into math, you know, there'll be pages and pages and pages of, of calculus uh, demonstrating that. So I'm going to try to skip as much of that as I can here, hopefully all of it, um, just to kind of show you what's going on here. So when you, when, you, when you have that force pushing the piston down, you have an equal and opposite force acting back up against the engine. So now I know it's the cylinder head, but the cylinder head is bolted to the engine. And, and when you're talking about a four bar linkage system, that, that is all considered the ground. So the engine is, is the ground. So you're putting a vibration back into it. Any, any force is causing a vibration. So the other forces here, you have a force at the piston wrist pin at the top of the connecting rod. Uh, and the, with respect to this, the way this, di this diagram is drawn, that force is acting to the right. At the other end of the connecting rod, you have a, another force acting to the left. So these four forces all have a primary and secondary component. But what they all do is they all impose their own vibration against the engine. So how do you eliminate or reduce vibrations? It's the same way you do it with sound. You introduce an out of phase vibration that interferes destructively. Uh, how do you do that with, a, with an engine? Well, you add cylinders. So it's very easy. And this is not a secret. This has been going on for, for a really, really long time. Everybody's, all these engine builders have always known about this. Um, what you have, when you have a, an inline six and an inline eight with the, with the optimal crank angles, you can eliminate pretty much all of these forces. And that's what makes those engines so great. And like I said, that's not a secret. Everybody's known that. Caterpillar, Detroit. Packar, I mean, all these guys making these huge, uh, you know, class eight tractor trailer engines, uh, bulldozers, locomotives, those huge tankers you see floating around the ocean covered in shipping containers. Those are actually inline 24s probably, but they're basically a series of inline sixes or inline eights. It's the same principle. They, uh, they've eliminated pretty much all of these vibrations and they produce huge amounts of power without fear of, of shaking them to pieces. Now a V8 on the other hand, sees all these same forces and, and vibrations and it eliminates hardly any of them. Um, but we love V8s, we're Americans, you know, we're all about V8s, we wanna say we have a V8, we wanna hear that sound of a V8. And we've been, we've been in love with them since, what, 1932 with the flathead and then, you know, NASCAR made it even worse and then it's just, you know, it's hard to get that out of our heads and you go around the world and it, uh, that's not the case everywhere, but here we love a V8. So anyway, what does all this mean for the, for the 4R100? All these vibrations affect anything bolted to it. So the bell housing is bolted to the engine. So it's gonna see all these vibrations. The torque converter is bolted to the flex plate, which is bolted to the crankshaft. The crankshaft, I didn't mention it before, but there's a, there's a fifth force. It's a, it's a rotational torsional force that only affects the crankshaft or anything bolted to it. And that's that's why the why the uh, harmonic balancer is important. But on the back end of that crankshaft is the flex plate, which is bolted to it, and the torque converter is bolted to the flex plate. So that's why flex plates take a beating, because um, there's a whole lot of banging around going on up against them you don't really realize. Um, but your transmission does, your flex plate does, your torque converter, everything, <laughs> everything inside your truck knows it, except really you. Um, so when you, when you start squeezing 800 horsepower out of these things, you're really, you're really pushing the limits here because you're, you're, you're not managing the vibration because you can't, because you, you most likely don't know how, um, but also the tools to do that aren't really available. This is the inside of a 4R100 as if you were looking up through the pan, you know, so your filter, uh, pops in here. Um, and here's your feed bolts for your 
center support and your uh, overdrive and intermediate piston assemblies. So the only place this is bolted to the to the transmission case is around the pump. That's fixed. And then at the bottom here, the rear end, uh, through the low reverse inner race. So this is actually sitting like that in there. There's a, it holds the, the low reverse return spring. This is the, the pistons. This all sits inside it and it gets bolted in there. Um, so that's, that's not much of a fix because nothing is actually bolted to the inner race, just like nothing's really bolted to the front pump. So it's all, it, it's not very fixed at all. And these feed bolts are only on the bottom ends of these, these parts here. So you have a, if, if I rotate this, so now if we're looking at this thing from the side, um, the center support is going to be doing that. The same with the uh, overdrive and intermediate pistons. And everything else in here is going to be just kind of shaking and whipping around. So when you're increasing horsepower coming into the, coming out of the engine into the transmission, you're just increasing all these oscillations. You're putting more vibration in there. And that's why stuff starts to break. That's why the, the uh, intermediate shaft breaks. Um, that's why these, you can't see them, but there's the, the intermediate sprag here that breaks. Uh, there's a whole lot of things that are going to start breaking. If you're squeezing 800 horsepower out of your 7.3, your 7.3 is not going to last very long. You're going to have these vibrations, and the vibrations are what's going to shake everything apart.